with progression of Parkinson's disease into its moderate or advanced stages, the classic postural instability becomes more of a source of disability for patients. Postural instability can manifest in several ways for the patient as well. When combined with the dysfunction of stepping or the shuffling gait, it can lead to a festination. Uh, festination is a hastening forward of uh, a Parkinson's patient's steps. Um, it can be thought of as, as the steps are decreased and you start to lose your balance. The, the top part of the body uh, continues to propel forward where the feet can get hung up and in an effort to keep one's balance, the feet start uh, hastening forward. Uh, at, for some patients, this can be so severe that the only thing that will stop them is, is grabbing a hold of the door or something else. When postural instability becomes more severe, um, the, uh, a patient's entire postural reflexes can be lost such that any perturbance can make them have a, a, a fall. On examination, this is tested by the pull test. An abnormal pull test is when the patient takes more than two or three steps of retropulsion before recovering their balance. This would be a mild form of retropulsion. When retropulsion is more significant, they will take many more steps. And if there's complete lack of postural reflexes, no reflex steps may happen at all and the examiner may have to catch the patient. These three patients show more significantly affected gait. They all have idiopathic Parkinson's disease. This first patient is probably the most affected. His stride length and arm swing are very decreased. There you can see this turning on block. He also had some slight freezing in that turn. Uh, the amount that his stride length is shortened uh, and the festination interfere with his gait, making it difficult. Therefore, I would rate that a, a, a 2 on the Peter S. The second patient has decreased stride length and some dystonia in the neck, which make his gait somewhat difficult. This third patient shows the response to medications that can happen in Parkinsonian gait. First here we see him with significantly stooped posture. And then next with meds, he has better stride length and although his posture is still affected, has, is improved somewhat. These three patients show severely affected Parkinsonian gait. This first patient actually has a diagnosis of multiple systems atrophy or MSA. You can see the difficulty she has rising out of a chair, even needing assistance using her hands to push up. When walking, she is unable to walk without an assist device here, her cane, and has much difficulty taking any steps. Once she's out in the open, she fares a little better. However, her shortened stride length and severe truncal dystonia here leaning towards the right, which could be described as Pisa syndrome, which is frequently seen in MSA, are causing her severe gait disturbance. This second patient has idiopathic Parkinson's disease and is off his medications. We can see that he needs full assistance to stand and is unable to even take one or two steps in his gait. This last patient demonstrates the postural instability seen in some Parkinson's patients. On pull test for balance, she has complete lack of postural responses and needs to be caught by the examiner.